Microsoft Excel 2010, Connecting to Sources Outside of Excel. Sometimes the data that you need to work with is not in Excel, and you need to bring it into Excel from another location. In this section, we'll talk about the Data tab and getting external data. The first data we're going to connect to will be from Access. Access is the database program for Microsoft Office. In order to connect to data that's in an existing Access database, you go into the Excel file you'd like to place it, you go to the Data tab, and on the Get External Data group, you're going to click on From Access. You'll then go and find the Access database. When you select the database you want to use, you'll have a list of the different objects that are in that Access database. And you would choose the object you want to use. I'm going to bring in customer data from an Access database. And OK. It's going to ask you how you want to view the data in your workbook. We're going to bring it in as a table, but it could also be brought in as a pivot table report. We're going to place it in the existing worksheet in the cell that's selected and click on OK. The access table will be brought into your Excel workbook and you'll get a design contextual tab up at the top where you can refresh the data every now and then. So if it changes in access, you can have it refresh in your Excel workbook. You can also go back to your data tab and look at the connection for this link. It will show you the connection that you have with this database and you can go into the properties on the right hand side. In the properties dialog box you can determine how you'd like to refresh your data. On the definitions tab in the dialog box it will tell you more about the connection in this case to the access database. We'll keep the defaults and click on cancel and close the Workbook Connections dialog box. If you want to refresh as you're working in this file, you can go up to the Refresh All, and it will refresh your workbook with any changes that have occurred on the Access side of the connection. And that's how you bring information from Access into an Excel workbook. The next external data source we will go over is how to query data from a website. First, you will go into the file you wish to import into. Then, you go to the Data tab, and in the Get External Data group, you'll choose From Web. This will open the new Web Query window, and it will go to the home page for your browser. You can size this to make it larger or you can double click on the title bar of the new web query to maximize it. And then you would scroll to find the data that you want to import. Any data that has a yellow box next to it with an arrow can be imported into your Excel file. I'm going to import the stock information, so I'll click on the box and it will turn into a green box with a check. And then down at the bottom, click on import. I'm going to put it on this existing sheet and I'll place it right in the A1 cell and click on OK. It will bring in that data that I just saw on the website and I can format it by going to the Home tab and making the changes I wish to make. This is linked to the website so I can go to the Data tab and I can click on the Refresh All button to refresh the data every now and then. It will readjust the column widths, but it will keep the other formats I put in. I can go to the Connections button on the Data tab, and I can go into the Properties of this connection to make any changes, such as when to refresh the data. And that's an example of importing data from a website. The next import of external data that we will go over is getting data from a text file. To do this, go into the Excel file you want to import into and go to your Data tab and from the Get External Data group, choose from Text. In the Import Text File dialog box, you would go and find the file that you want to import. 
In our case, we have a text document we're going to import, and we're going to double click on it. And the text import wizard dialog box will come up with the first of three steps. The first step is going to ask you, in your text file, how is the data separated? Is the data separated with commas or tabs or spaces? Or is the data separated with fixed widths, such as columns? We're going to keep it as delimited and click on Next. The second step is going to ask you how the text is separated. And you'll see the sample down below of your actual data. So if the data was separated by commas, you would choose comma instead of tab. In our case, the data is separated by tabs. So if we keep it as tabs, it will separate that data into columns. And then click on Next. And the final step is going to ask you for column data format. General is the default. So if it sees anything that's text, it will be a text data type. If it sees a date, it will convert it to dates and numbers into numbers. If there's a column or columns you do not wish to import, you would select the column and choose Do Not Import. And then you can click on Finish. It will ask you where in this worksheet you would like to place the information, and we'll place it right in the A1 cell, and OK. The data has been imported, and we can go and adjust the formatting and on the Data tab, you can refresh, go into the Connections dialog box, and go into the Properties of the connection. And that's how you import data from a text file into Excel. Finally, if you have data that you want to link to that's not from an Access database, or from a website, or from a text file, you may need to go to your Data tab and choose from Other Sources. From here, you can choose to import from a SQL Server site, from an Analysis Services cube, from an XML data source, or you can have Excel run a data connection wizard to help you find the data you want to import. You can also import data using the Microsoft Query Wizard. If you choose any of these options, it will either open up a wizard or open up a dialog box asking you for more information. If you have an Excel file that has a link to another Excel file, on the Data tab, you'll see Edit Links in the Connections group. If there is no link to another Excel file, this will be grayed out. In our file, we do have a link to another Excel workbook. And if we click on the Edit Links button, it will open up the Edit Links dialog box and will tell us what file or files are linked into this file. The options you have on the right-hand side, you can update the values. So if those changes are being made real-time, you might want to update the link to see if any changes have been made. You can also change the source. So if the name of the file you're linking to has been changed or the location has been changed, you might need to click on the Change Source and find the file. You can open the source from this dialog box, which would open whatever is selected as your source, and you can also break the link. In the lower left-hand corner, you'll have your Startup Prompt. And if you click on that, you can determine when you open this workbook, what do you want to have happen? The Startup Prompt will allow you to determine whether you want to have a prompt when you open up the file to say that there are links within this file, and if you want to update those links. We'll keep it as Let Users Choose to Display the Alert or Not, and OK, and Close. If we close this file and then reopen it, we'll see a security warning up at the top of the worksheet. If the user trusts the source of the link, they can enable the content. And then they'll be able to go to the Data tab and edit the links or refresh the data to see if any changes have been made. And these are methods for importing external data into Excel and working with the links between Excel workbooks.